Okay, the last speaker of this uh, session is uh, Ms. Shike uh, Lee uh, from Osaka University. Her title is okay, uh, Charged Transport Mechanism in Molecular Electric Wires. Yes, please. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Uh, as you see, my name is uh, Lee CK and I belong to Tada Laboratory. I'm from Osaka University. So, in a field of molecular electronics, basically one of our main interests is to understand further about charge transport mechanism. Thus, today, in my topic, in my presentation today, I'll be talking about the charge transport mechanisms in the molecular wires. As you all, maybe most of you all know, there are actually two main transport mechanisms in the molecular wires. One is known as tunneling, Second is known as hopping. And the, conductance that we, and the conductance of the molecular wires is actually the net rate of these two mechanisms, tunneling and also hopping. So tunneling can be represented by this equation, while hopping is represented by this equation. So first, let me uh, talk about this figure first. This figure is uh, published in the year 2005 by the group Joy Kim and Redner, which shows the conductance as a function of the distance. So as you can see clearly here, at shorter distance, we can see that the main dominant mechanism is actually tunneling. But as the distance becomes longer, it will reach a certain value where tunneling will actually be, uh, where tunneling will become weaker and will slowly be overcome by the another mechanism, which is known as hopping. So this is another figure um, shown in 2009. Uh, it's 2009 by Tao and Chen's group, which shows for four different molecules, um, alkane, uh, oligopeptide, carotenoid, and oligothiophane. Okay, so main thing on the highlight first, from this slope of the figure, we can obtain this beta value and we can see that the beta value for these two molecules, alkane and oligopeptide, are actually much bigger if compared to carotenoid and oligothiophene. This means that maybe for this alkane and oligopeptide, they will only demonstrate only tunneling mechanism because like over here, so if, they meant, if the molecule is longer, they wouldn't demonstrate any, we can only show very, very big conductance value. But not the same thing can be said about the oligothiophane and carotenoid. These molecule wires have very small beta values, which shows they got potential of showing this as um, exhibiting these two mechanisms. Thus, the interest of my talk for today. Okay. This result is actually by choice group. Okay, this result is by Choice Group, in, published in the year 2010. So they have actually conducted experiment for ONI molecule for very various lengths, from ONI2 to ON, then the longest molecule is, uh, is identified as ONI10. You can see clearly from this resistance versus molecular length graph that it can observe two different, uh, two different slopes, which indicates that two different transport mechanisms have been observed indicating one of them is tunneling and one of them is hopping. So to confirm whether this is really true, they have actually varied the temperature. So why is varying the temperature important? As I mentioned, if you notice in the equation earlier, so for tunneling mechanism, if you can see clearly, there is no temperature parameter in here. Whereas for hopping equation, you can see that there's a T parameter here, which in other words uh, means when that we vary the temperature, if the molecule demonstrates tunneling mechanism, it shouldn't show any dependence at all, meaning the conductance value would rarely change. But if it demonstrates hopping mechanism, you can see it would be affected by this temperature. So you can see for this result here by choice group, they have chosen two different molecules. One is ONI3 and ONI, the other is ONI4. So for ONI3, you can see that the value here obtained 
remains nearly the same. Okay, so you can actually draw a long parallel, uh, straight line. For values up from 240 up to 300, around 340 Kelvin, values are nearly the same, So, it, which indicates this mechanism here is not affected by temperature at all, which also means that the dominant mechanism here is tunneling. Whereas for ONI4, for different temperature, all the values, as you can see, the green dots are all different. So it indicates clearly that the mechanism for this molecule is hopping, not tunneling. Um, this graph is also known as Arrhenius graph. And from this slope here, we can calculate the activation energy. And for ONI molecule, they calculated it to be around 0 0.55 electron volts. So in, to measure conductance, for my work, I use the STM rate junction method, which I think most of you are familiar. Anyway, I'll just briefly introduce about this process. For STM rate junction, firstly, the STM tip will slowly um, make contact, go, move closer to make contact with the substrate. So after the contact is made, it will be retracted, and we can usually observe um, formation of steps, first in the form of conduct, quantum of conductance, which we call it as G0, represented by this equation. And if there are molecules in between the tip and the substrate, we can observe further steps below this value, quantum of conductance. So for STM rate junction, we repeat this process for around hundreds to dozens of times, because not every time we can observe the presence of this molecule. And from these hundreds and thousands of data that are obtained, we will, conduct, we will create this conductance histogram. And the ideal feature is here will be represented by G0. And the second one here will be show the single molecular conductance. So this is for my experimental work. I'm interested. Uh, the molecule which I use for my work is oligothiophane molecule. And I conduct experiment for three different molecules, known as 5T, 14T, and 17T, each having a different length. The shortest being 2.2 nanometer, while the longest one which I use for my experiment is 6.7 nanometer. These molecules are dissolved in toluene, and I conduct my experiment in two different conditions. First, for room temperature and higher and above, I conduct in argon gas condition. While for room temperature and lower temperature, I conduct it in vacuum condition. I think most of you also, some of you are already aware that um, in 2009, actually, our group, Yamada's group, we actually published this paper for oligothiophane, and we demonstrate that for this molecule, the shortest being 5T and the longest which we measured was 23T, actually demonstrate there's a possibility that it, show, that it shows two different kinds of slopes. You can see here. So indicating one, it's initially it, it shows tunneling behavior. And after a certain length, it changed from tunneling to hopping. So my interest in my work is to confirm whether it's really true or not. And how I do that is by verifying, uh, is by varying the temperature, just like what, what Choice Group did earlier. Mm, this is the results, for some of the results which I've chosen to explain. So for the shortest molecule, the 5T molecule, it demonstrates for three different temperatures which I'm showing here, 100 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin, 350 Kelvin. You can see that the conductance value remains here, similar line, which indicates that it shows no dependence with temperature at all. And I can say that the dominant mechanism here is tunneling. For 17T molecule, for this street temperature, 300 Kelvin, 325, 350, you can see all the conductance value changes, meaning that it shows dependence with temperature, which also indicates that the dominant transport mechanism is not tunneling. Instead, it is hopping. So I have actually shown the results for our previous work, and this is the results for all my three molecules. So the interesting, so I managed to show here that for 5T molecule, for all different temperature, I can draw just a straight line. The conductance value doesn't change at all. So indicates that the dominant mechanism 
is tunneling. But for the green dots, represent 17 T molecule, all the conductance values are different, which indicates the dominant transport mechanism for this molecule is hopping. What is interesting is for 14 T molecule, 14 T molecule actually shows tunneling behavior up to around this region, which is actually 350 Kelvin. But from 350 Kelvin onwards, that means at higher temperatures, it actually changes from the initial tunneling behavior to the hopping behavior, which is something very interesting. So the next thing I'll just talk is the possible origin. Why hopping mechanism is possible? Basically, as you can see here, mm, okay, I've used David's uh, res group's results published in 2001. So basically, most all our molecules that we use for our experiments are basically not straight. They are not planar. So maybe for shorter molecules, as you can see here, the short ones, the electron can transport easily from one, one electrode to another electrode using tunneling mechanism. But as the molecule becomes longer and longer, each unit, as I mentioned, they are not planar. So as each it becomes lo longer, you can see like here, the rotation units increase and they will reach like a certain distance where the electron will find it is easier to transport using hopping instead of tunneling. And so, um, from the Arrhenius graph, we can always we can calculate the activation energy, and based on Davis group's discussion, we actually attribute this activation energy, which is calculated, is actually due to the conformational, conformational uh, skating process of the molecule. And so I'll just conclude my work. So for five T molecule. It shows that the dominant transport mechanism is tunneling. For 17 T molecule, the dominant transport mechanism is hopping, and the calculated activation energy is 0.3 electron volts. And for the last 14 T demonstrates two transport behavior. First, tunneling up to around 350 Kelvin. And for temperature higher than 350 Kelvin, it changes from the initial tunneling to hopping behavior. But it also shows the same activation energy around 0 0.3 electron watt. Okay, that's all for my talk for today. Thank you.